whereas in the supervised learning environment the learner is presented with uh, the right or wrong answers in an unsupervised context the data points that you have don't have any labels attached to it so the learning algorithm is expected to learn the natural groups or clusters within the set of data points as an example uh, we can consider for instance an online um, video rental shop which would like to cluster their customers based on their um, preferences so that they can target um, advertising materials better so for each of the movies that the customer rents out they can be providing a review based on how much they like the movie so let's say a number between one to five that's the review and when you um, visualize this data again it's intentionally put in two dimensions so that we can um, visualize it so for each of the data points you'll see that they appear without any labels so this might be one instance of how the data points look like and the idea behind um, unsupervised learning is to learn the groups the natural groups or clusters that you can figure out from these data points um, an example of an unsupervised learning um, algorithm is called the k-means um, clustering algorithm and the way k-means um, algorithm works is that it initializes a random center for your cluster point so let's say we want to create two clusters out of this data set it picks out c1 again it's the center of the cluster is randomly chosen let's say c1 is here and c2 maybe is somewhere here and so for each of the data point what we do is we measure the distance from it to the center of the cluster and assign the data point to the cluster which is the closest to it so in this way you might find that c1 has the following membership and C2 has this membership. So for the resulting uh, points in this um, group, we can work out the centroid. So the centroid for this set of points might be here. So this is the new center for the first cluster. And likewise, for this set of points, the center might be somewhere here. C2. This is the, our new C2. And this algorithm essentially repeats again for each of the points. We try and figure out whether it belongs to this cluster or the other cluster. And the memberships are revised. The resulting centroids are then calculated. And the algorithm keeps repeating until the center of the centroids converges to a stationary point. So that would mark the final membership of the points in the of the data points belonging to the cluster so the final membership might look something like this this is one cluster and the second cluster so this is the maybe the first cluster and the other cluster might emerge as this